Hello guys and welcome back to Between the Ropes TV. Now it's a hectic weekend isn't it? Uh, a lot's gone on in the football world, the boxing world. As we know England have crashed out of the World Cup, much to everyone's uh, devastation. But the boxing world rolls on uh, and today we're going to be looking at Michael Collins' win last night over Kareem Gwerthy. Um it's a funny one. For those that don't know, Conlon scored a first round stoppage win, which is uh, emphatic in fairness. But I think you have to keep context there that Gwerthy is, yes, European, well, former European champion, so he's fought at a decent level. However, he has stopped being stopped by Jordan Gill this year. And I'm a fan of Jordan Gill, but as Kiko Martin has then proved, Jordan Gill's not world level. Uh, so I think, you know, it's easy for Conlon fans and myself included in that to get carried away in the hype that obviously Collins now going to generate. However, it is what it is, isn't it? You know, he's come back after that Lee Wood fight. He's had two comeback fights now. He's on the build. I think we need to look at what, what what's next for Michael Conlon because lots of talk about world title fights and stuff. And, you know, another reaction that we'll get on to, obviously Josh Warrington lost his title last night. It's wide open, this featherweight division, isn't it? Look at how many title changes we've seen over the last 12 to 18 months. Obviously, we had Kid Galahad, to Kiko Martinez, to Warrington, now to Lopez. Mark Mugsayo won it, then lost it to Ray Vargas. It, it goes around. It's, it's, it's a who's who in the featherweight division at the minute. Uh, and it's tough to say who's actually the top dog in it. But I think Michael Conlon definitely fits somewhere into that picture. I think it's just a case of navigating him to the right fight. Now, it looks like we're going to get Lee Wood versus Maurizio Lara in this Q1 schedule that Match Room is set to announce before Christmas. And I, I really like that fight. Obviously, it's a rearranged fight, so I'm not going to knock that. But obviously, a lot of Conlon fans have talked about they want to see that rematch because let's not forget Wood's world level. That power, it's just a monster of an equaliser, as obviously Conlon found out. But for large spells of that fight, Conlon was winning. He was controlling the fight, controlling the pace and boxing beautifully as we know he can. So that is definitely a rematch I'd like to see down the uh, down the line. But for me, the fight I think he should have next is Josh Warrington. Warrington's just lost his IBF title. Needs a decent name, and obviously he's talking about fights in America. But unless they did the Lara trilogy over in America, I don't really see who he goes to fight over there for it to be a draw and give the fans that big away day. He's coming off a loss, so he needs to be more active and it's not his fault he's only fought uh twice this year at the start and then at the end obviously he had the broken jaw and the hand issues but you've got to drum up interest that leads army are loyal to josh warrington but loyal loyalty doesn't necessarily sell tickets especially in this economic climate so when you look at going over to america it's got to be a name and other than laura i don't see where that narrative comes from because he's not going to get a world title fight so i don't see where it comes from to drum it up however if we made the Conlon fight and Josh Warrington was to beat Michael Conlon, which I think it would be 50-50, in all fairness. As I said, I, I like Conlon. His boxing ability is brilliant. But, you know, off his two comeback fights, let's let's not get carried away. He's probably done what he should have done. If Warrington or, or Conlon comes through that, they're both at the, right at the front of the queue to say world title fight, whether that be Lee Wood at the city ground, whether that be, you know, Ray Vargas, who knows that, the opportunities are endless, but that's the fight I'd like to see. I think it makes great sense for both. It's a good payday for both. It's a good fight for both. And the fans would want to see it. And I think the key, and we've, we've got more videos coming on this, but at the end of 2021, we were excited about fights to come. 2022 is not delivered in certain areas. So 2023 has to deliver. And for me, Michael Conlon is a big part of that. And if you could fight Josh uh, Warrington, I'm all for it. So guys, stay tuned. Join us on the next one.